Hello you primitive screwheads, listen up, it's me, Vince, awesome as pleasant kind of be on the internet. Often the instructions to my videos with gameplay can be a bit longer, uh, sometimes I'll have full histories of the archetype, deck text, skits, some asides, some sort of admin or, or discussion about the channel or greater things within Magic itself. Not today, I've got a shitload of gameplay for you to watch, I've been playing the new Giver of Runes in Mono White Death and Taxes in Modern, the deck list should be on screen now. I'm not going to go through Death and Taxes as well it is too much there are going to be links in the description and all the cards to other videos where i've talked in depth about the archetype and what it is at its core if you want to hear about me comparing giver runes to mother runes again i've done a video on that i don't want to go over it again in this video and sort of waste time just look in the cards click the little eye in the top right hand corner click that eye look at the cards and pick out the videos you want to watch. So we're going to be using Giver of Runes to protect our lock pieces, our disruption, and then smack people upside the head and get some value on more out of it by flickering some shit. I am literally going to rush through this. Don't forget I'm sponsored by ChannelFireball.com. If you're signing up for a GP in the near future, use the code Kenobi to show who sent you and give some support to the channel. If you want to support the channel directly and get involved in the Discord channel, then there's a Patreon link in the description below as well. Come sign up for $2 a month. You can join the Discord. The largest contract to my Patreon are here. This week I was going to be Levi's Red White Prison Deck, but I realised that Modern Horizons was out sooner than I thought, so that's why we're here now. Also, there's a link in the description below for t-shirts and merch by Pleasant Kenobi. With all of that out of the way, with all of that out the fucking way, <clears throat> with all of that out of the way, let's play some fucking modern. Round one. We have lost the die roll. We have a hand that is unkeepable. We have a hand with two vials and two arbiters, so this is borderline shit. But I'm not going to fight. Put that on the bottom of our library. Kevin on humans, eighth of vial. I, I, I guess this is probably humans then. We play a vial and we pass back. One drop off the vial, champion of the parish. Then they cast a Thalia. For the record, arbiters just shit in this matchup. We don't have any fetch lands to mess around with or any search strategies in the main deck, so it's kind of just a bear that makes our ghost quarters good sometimes. On the upside, we drew Field of Ruin, so our old Rosy Displacer can actually activate, which would be nice. We play a bear and pass. And yes, before someone says it, I know he's a cat. Snow covered plains. Looks like everyone's on the snow plan now that Horizons is out. And it's a reflector mage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get slapped for five. We cast a displacer and we'll keep our cat in our vial to not give away information that we haven't got another two drop. That might be good, like, I don't know, a Sarah Avenger if we're actually playing good cards. Phantasmal image copying Eldrazi Displacer. At least our Eldrazi Displacer will kill their Eldrazi Displacer when we get to activate it. Although you may be having flashbacks to a standard past. Ugh. I throw the cat under the bus and I attempt to kill the Reflector Mage with our 3-3. I assume we're going to get a Displacer activation on the Reflector Mage now. Instead they let it go for some reason, I don't really know why. Having displaced it on the Reflector Mage seems very strong. I'm not going to take my Vile up because I've got a 2 drop in hand. And we've got a Thalia here. I'm going to play the other Aether Vial, which I can't play because it costs 2 mana because they've got a Thalia in play. In our end step, I activate Displacer Target in their Displacer, which triggers the Fantastic Image ability and it dies. They didn't use the mana for some reason. I don't really know why. But fine, I'll take it. We make a cat off of our Aether Vial. We go to blocks, we block a 2-2 in front of the 3-3. I would Displacer in front of the Thalia, but I'm scared there's a Thalia's Lieutenant in here and we'll just lose our Displacer. And our Displacer is the main way that we get back in this game. They play a second Aether Vial and pass the turn. We play a second Aether Vial. We can't attack yet because we need to be on blocking duty next turn, but we pass back with a Thalia inside our Pokeball. They swing again, we activate our Pokeball, and we're going to put into play a Thalia. We're going to go to blocks, block here, and block here. I'm going to displace the champion if they don't make a Thalia's Lieutenant. I'm going to displace their Thalia if they do. Problem is when I'm flickering their creatures now, I'm going to be pumping the other creatures. So, so these are going to get bigger the more I flicker things, which is not great. I could do with drawing perhaps a removal spell. And uh, then we can kill one of the big threats like the champion and go from there. That also works out horribly because of the triggers. I should let the Thalia's Lieutenant trigger resolve first. Otherwise, this Thalia wouldn't be a 3-2. We drew another displacer, which isn't terrible. But it's not great. We attack for three. We're no longer not. 
We're no longer not in the race. They attack with everything with Violet in our display, so we go to blocks. We're planning to take nine here and kill the Thales Lieutenant so that when we flicker things in future, we're not just growing another body. Kind of works. The problem being that we're now dead to Amanda's right off the top of their deck. Oh, and they had another Lieutenant anyway, I think. Or just a Thalia. Okay. So we're going to trade with the Thales Lieutenant. That's fine. And we're going to take seven and go to one. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's... Better than nothing. We drew a Blade Splicer, which is actually a pretty solid draw in all fairness. So we're really wanting to dodge any kind of flyer. Uh, Mantis Rider would be the worst one. So no Mantis Rider here. They go to combat and they're going to, uh, I assume, swing with everything. Oh, just the thong. We make a Blade Splicer. We go to blocks. We block like this. And then we're going to displace our Blade Splicer. pa -chow! Now have two first striking golems. We're on the board. We need another colorless land and then we're, we're pretty golden. We drew another colorless land in Tectonic Edge. So this is actually a really good spot. We attack them with one golden for now. I want to keep as much. I'm basically a very reserved magic player. And that probably gives people extra turns where they shouldn't get them. Now what would really screw us is a removal spell on our displacer. Uh, we do have a vial on three though, so a reflective mage doesn't quite do it. And we win. They have two lands and a vial in hand. So uh, yeah, Eldrazi displacer and blade splicer turn out to be... Good enough to beat even ridiculous tier decks. Fucking how I love this card. We've got a one lander with like a one drop, a two drop, and a three drop. But like, this card isn't very good without lands. We are on the draw. If they curve out, we just die. I don't think we can keep it. Okay, give her runes into Arbiter into Display. So if we find a colorless land and a wisp or a blade spice, we're in a good place. We bottom the planes. Predictable. Predictable. Uh, they are going to curve out. That's gross. We drew the colorless lands. That's very good. With the Giver of Runes and the Lit Displacer online, we should be able to like really mess with our combat plans. Uh, we pass back. Predictable. There's a Thalia. This is now a 2-2. We take two. <gasps> we play an Arbiter that can now block and be given protection from from white or blue or whatever we need to each turn. So that's pretty good. It also gives us uh, insurance into Reflector Mage as well because we can give the Arbiter protection after the Reflector Mage trigger is put on the stack. Predictable. It comes with Reflector Mage. I wonder where it'll target. I assume the Giver of Runes. Yes, okay. Let's give the Alien Arbiter protection from white, which allows us to fog some damage for a turn. We can't play Giver of Runes this turn, so we're gonna play Eldrazi Displacer. Have a displace activation plus giver of runes up next turn. With no vial out, it means we can actually block a 2 1 or a 2 3 with our 3 3 without fear of it getting pumped by a lieutenant. If they just play a lieutenant though, then we'll feel quite sad. Sadness is. Sadness is placed upon the stack. We're in that situation again where displace is just going to make these creatures humongous. So we need to draw paths and splices. ASAP. Those are some big, big lads. Okay, they swing in with a load of stuff. We block the 6-6 six, six with the cat. They're just going under the bus, basically. Take 6, going to 15. 12, even. Math is very difficult. I mean, a set of the wreckage would be really good. That's also pretty good. Play Giver of Runes. A Flicker Wisp. Wait, do we want to attack with a 3-3 three, three first? We reset the Champion of Parish, which will grow the Lieutenant by one point. But I mean, we're just trying to survive to the point that our Displacer Giver of Runes Flicker Wisp combination can just ruin their combat every turn. Ideally, we just want to draw a path next turn, and I think we actually might be able to stabilize. If we don't die this turn to, like, you know, land Mantis Rider, Thales Lieutenant, they crack the Horizon Canopy to draw a card, which is just that whatever's in their hand is not useful in this scenario. Found another champion. Did they. And they, and they found the. They found the Mantis Rider. That's kind of like what I said we didn't want to see, right? That. that huh. Okay. Well, shit. So their turn was relatively good. I'm not gonna lie. To not die here, I think I have to block with all of my creatures. <laughs> well, we can take nine by trading our Wisp for the Mantis Rider and chumping Giver of Runes into the Thales Lieutenant, but then we're just, I guess we're just drawing to settle the wreckage. So at this point, we're just too slow to get online. All right, so let's take nine, going to three. We wanna draw that one off set of the wreckage. We're actually one man off of uh, overloading Abandon the Winds or whatever it's called as well. Well, shit. We have Path, Settle, Eldrazi Displacer, Seth, Loveless Spirit. Uh, if we just draw lands, this hand's actually really good. If we don't draw lands, this hand's really bad. I guess that could be said about most hands in Magic. Noble Hierarch from them. At least it's not a champion. Selfless Spirit. I might end up pathing my own spirit to make land drops, because if we make land drops, we're in a really good spot. 
The other great thing about Displacer is that it makes you leave your mana up, so you're not signposting set all the records too badly. Or we are champion, sure. Inboard? That's a weird sideboard card, I will, I will have to say. We're going to get in for two here, because we're probably part of our own self the spirit on end step. Because we want to untap and play a Displacer and get towards Settle and Resto Mana. Being one draw away from Settle is a lot, lot different to being two draws away from Settle. This is actually a solid response to Reflector Mage as well, to be fair. There we have it. We've hit our fourth land drop. After pathing our own spirit of in response to this Reflector Mage trigger. Now the question is, do we play a Displacer here? It can block these creatures pretty well. Even with a Lieutenant, it can still block. And then if they if they reflect a mage it, then we can keep the mana up for settle or resto uh, in the following turn. The good thing about resto as well, in addition to settle the wreckage, is that we can keep up settle mana and still use it on end step to make a three four flyer. Um, so yeah, basically displays to settle the wreckage and restoration angel all played really well together. There's the Thalia's lieutenant. Okay. This might just be an attack from a three four this turn. Then I should say a three four. It'll be a four five with exalted. Or they'll just keep playing more. More creatures, jeez. Okay, this is gonna be a fantastic image on Reflector Mage or Lieutenant. Reflector Mage makes sense. Well, okay, not ideal. So we're gonna take five here and go to 13. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's painful. I guess we just pretend like we haven't got anything other than Displacer in hand because they might think we've got two Displacer in hand now because we aren't casting anything with Reflector Mage. But they might not play into Settle, in which case maybe our Restoration Angel can eat something. Is is that going to be it? That seems like a weird attack. Surely this one would be better. Okay. And then we're going to go to blocks. I don't know if playing out of the bodies is even correct here. I think I'll just pass again. And it gives us like Restoration Angel Settle Manage. If we didn't have the other Resto, then I think we'd definitely have to slam the space room and Arbiter here. We couldn't rely on the Settle the Wreckage. What we could do if they swing with just one Reflector Mage is splash in the other Restoration Angel and double block. That's a Thalia. That grows their Lieutenant. Okay. It's a 4-5. Let's kill it with our Restoration Angel. We want to force them into just swinging outright. I think not tapping our mana here is too much of a signpost for Cell. So I'm tempted to play two creatures out, but then they can just crack in for a bunch if they play one Lord. They're only on 27, don't... You know, what's there to worry about? Attack with a 4-4 Exalted Creature. I guess I'm just going to double block it down again. They can't kill both. They'll kill the Displace without a doubt. They have three cards in hand. I have no fucking idea what those three cards are. We really can't play our own Thalia because it'll make our settles cost too much. So I'm just going to go for the double spell again. 28 life. Casual 29 life. Our Ghost Quarter is most likely a Strip Mine now because Agents of God can't even pay for it. So anything tapped would make it a, a Strip Mine. But that seems terrible when I've got a Displacer in play. That's a Lord. That makes everything like quite big. But not big enough to swing through this Restoration Angel. So... Yep, it's just the Reflector Mage coming in. I think taking four is the correct answer here. It makes them more likely to play into the settle. No attacks for me again, because I'm a coward. They cracked their Horizon Canopy, and now they're thinking with three cards in hand. I really wanted to slam a Lord and just turn everything sideways, and then we can get them. Mantis Rider. 4-4 four, four Mantis Rider comes in, and we're going to displace it. They gain life out of it, and they grow their Thalia's Lieutenant. Oh, boy. Displacer is an awkward one against this deck. Every other deck, it's so good, but this is awkward. Okay, we drew a plane, so we can play a Blade Splicer for the turn, and we can still have a Displacer activation up. And then the turn after, we're just going to hold up our mana for it. They're going to 34 life. 34 fucking life. Jesus Christ on a bike. Again, I'm not cracking in just yet. Next turn, I think, is the turn that we turn the corner. Displace the Mantis Rider. He gained a life, going to 35. Thalys Intent becomes a 4 4. Phantasmal Image. Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage, my Displacer. That's a. That's a bit of a shitter. Okay. We might see the big settle turn next turn then, hopefully. And we've got a path. We can't cast Long Solid because there's a Thalia in. Well, we're not attacking now. <laughs> and playing a Thalia out would make our spells very expensive and not allow us to settle this turn. Hopefully, they play a second Lord here. Right, this is it. This is it. This is what. This is what I've come here to do. This is what I, what I was designed for. I think, maybe, I hope. Please swing with everything. Please swing with everything. Come on, come at me. Oh yes, that is fucking glorious. Well, surprise. It's a settle the wreckage. I think that's a random spell clever from their sideboard. Now that'd be 
pretty insane. And there you have it. Sometimes you've just got to lure the fly into your web like some kind of magic card playing spider. The die roll has been won. And we've got another one lander. I'm wondering if the deck needs 24 lands, honestly. We're going to mulligan this. Two lander, Aether Vial, two drop, three drop, four drop. This is a keep. Put a path to exile on top. Sure, 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 sure. There we go. Make an Aether Vial and pass the turn. I love Eldrazi Displacer. This video is meant to be showcasing Giver of Runes, but Displacer is just the bomb, isn't it? It's just the bomb. Lily tapped God of Shrine. We put a counter on our Aether of Vial and say yes. We're going to play a Planes and we're going to play a Selfless Spirit. As we're just going to monopolize on the, the tempo of actually playing cards on curve. I know if I'll lure you into not doing that, but sometimes you've got to cast creatures on curve. Is this our Drazi and Taxes? I think it is. Well, that's our Path to Exile in our hand. Got Let's say yes to Aether Vial. That does make sense to go up to two. And draw Resto. The sadness is very fucking real. Let's attack. I assume we're going to get like Thought Odyssey in next turn. They take our Display Sign and then we're stuck with these Restos in hand for the rest of them. Nope. Okay, we dodged the TKS for one turn. That's a Wisp to reset our Vial. Fuck me. Okay. We, we're we gonna be sitting back on defense then. Okay, Vile ticks up again. We're gonna draw a land. There we are. Okay, not the worst. Not the worst. We pass back. They make a land drop. They're gonna path our displacer. Quite helpful to be fair. Means we can cast these restoration angels. They know about at least one of the angels. This is a TKS. No, it's a displacer. And they have an Adrazi Temple online. Uh, this path to X is a pretty good draw here. I can path the title right now. Give them a land that can path the displacer. We just leave them with a wisp. That seems pretty strong. I mean, displacer is very good. Attack for two. Do you offer the block? Got a displacer in play. Let's kill this Title Holy Scholar now. This is why I don't like Title Holy Scholar or Quella, because this sort of thing happens to me all the time. I just get majorly blown out for them. This isn't a blowout, it's just a very good turn for us. But I get blown out all the fucking time. They attack for three, we go to 15. Play a second Wisp. Question is, are they going to Wisp a Wisp or are they going to Wisp a Vile? They're going to Wisp a Wisp. Dahlia, sure. Low impact in this matchup, but sure. And a Wisp taking out my Vile, that is fine. The Vile is pretty bad in the mirror, as you can see, for these reasons. We drew a Blade Splicer, we're going to play a Blade Splicer, and that allows us to play our Restoration Angel on our Splicer two turns in a row to make a load of golems and hopefully enough value to win. I'm going to trade myself a Spirit in for a Wisp here. Take three and go to 12. They have one card in hand. We draw a Plane. So we're going to keep that Plane in our hand because they know about one of the resto. So we want to play the Hidden Information game. Attacking with a Golem. Our opponent thinks long and hard about attacking into this Restoration Angel they know about thanks to the Tide Hollow Skeller from turn two. They have so many lands that if they draw a Displacer, we're in trouble. But apart from that, we're in a good spot there. Restoration Angel on end step, flicker our Blade Splicer, and make another 3 3. Feels good. Name a more iconic duo. Oh, wait. Do you know what? Saying that meme out loud feels really cringy. <laughs> I think their last card is a removal spell because there's a pause there on end step where they thought that they wanted to do something. Let's get into the beatdown zone and let's send in all our three Xs. It's nine power coming at you. Cleopatra. They've got their own Restoration Angel. This will flicker their Flicker Wisp, which will allow them to flicker out a Golem. Then the Restoration Angel will eat another Golem, unfortunately. Yes. Now we get to Restoration Angel on Blade Splicer in combat. And hopefully, get them. Two mana Aether Vile on turn eight. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm, well, I am laughing at the misfortune, but I, I know the feeling. It's a familiar horrible feeling. They don't attack and end step we go for the iconic two card combo. It's basically Splinter Twin. Crack our Horizon Canopy, find another Horizon Canopy, because you know, yeah. We swing for nine again, the Restoration Angel can easily eat this golem with a block, but that lets six damage through. So instead they go for a double block where they can kill one of my restos and take six, so we opt to kill the Flicker Wisp here. They go to four, we pass back with a Blade Splicer inside our Pokeball. We're on 12, they're on 4, they're empty handed. The only really problematic card they could draw at this point in the game would be Displacer, because Displacer could displace both our Golem and our Restoration Angel. Although displacing the Restoration Angel does create a Golem, in essence. Here comes Tide Hollow Sculler. But wait, you fell into my trap. Okay, you can look, you can. You can look at my hand now. They're left with a very difficult decision, either to die or concede, and they choose to concede. We've got the 
We've got the unholy combination of Flickerwiz and Eldrazi Displacer, which means that the rules of magic don't really apply to us. They've marked a six. I'm gonna fucking windmill slam keep this hand. Turn one Eldrazi Temple. Hmm, interesting. Player planes, pass the turn. We can't actually cast a Sundering Growth. It is a little bit stressful on our mana base considering we're playing like nine colorless. Displacer, sure. I'm gonna just path that now because, well, actually, no. I might path it in their upkeep. I'm unlikely to draw a two-drop that I want to play, so giving them the untapped land is dumb. There we go. No displacer. He who displaces wi wins. It's kind of... I was riffing on he who dares, the the SES thing, but that didn't really... Eh. This feels like a thought not seer. But it's not. It's a Kaya. Wow. Okay. That exiles Aether Vials. And stuff. It also exiles my Blade Spicer tokens frustratingly, so I guess I don't want that to happen. I'm gonna run out Displacer. Next turn we can like activate Field of Ruin to blow up the Eldrazi Temple and have Mana for Sundering Growth. Or we can run out a 3 drop. Okay, that's an Arbiter. We can really mess with their mana base. Okay. So Displacer gets pathed with the Arbiter in play and they exile some stuff from my graveyard. We need to threaten the Care eventually. It's one of those innocuous cards that if we just ignore it, it's going to kill us eventually too. Well, Winds of Abandoned will be very good later in the game. But I guess we just have to keep slamming threats and hopefully we'll get through with them. It'll draw us a Displacer number two. Nothing from them, not even at, at Uptick of the Kaya, which seems odd. I'm going to go to combat and attack the Kaya. I don't think this is buying them too much time, but I guess we're not trying to burst them down. We just want to win the game and win the grind. Blade Splicer resolves. It makes a 3-3. Three, three. If their one card in hand is path, they can path my displacer now, but that's... Well, it wasn't. Kaya can down tick to kill the golem, but it puts her down to one. I don't think we mind. They've scooped it up. Displacer plus Blade Splicer is a combination of cards that if you can't take it apart, will quickly run over the game. And they didn't want to try and win back from it. So yeah, GG, Displacee. Round three. As my estranged uncle once said before he was sent to prison for shitting on a swan, it's better to be lucky than good, and we've won the dive roll again. I'm gonna keep this. We got a vial, we got two lands, we got a Thalia. It's gonna be some form of blue white control. We're gonna leave planes into Aether Vial. Aether Vial on turn one is very good. We're gonna see our first force negation. No, no one's no one's playing it. Not yet, anyway. For those of you who don't know, this is very early days of Modern Horizons. I'm only playing three Giver of Runes as I marked at the beginning of the video because I can only get hold of three Giver of Runes. Modern Horizons cards are still quite hard to get hold. The set only came out yesterday on Modo. I'm gonna to attempt to cast a Thalia here because if we get to counter, we've got another one in hand. And he's up one of their spells and gives us some information as we want. Thalia resolves. If they path it, we're actually pretty happy about it. Yes. Mana is good. Island from our opponent. And we see a Sahili Sublime Artificer again. It's almost like War of the Spark had more of an impact on modern modern horizon. But shh, shh. Don't tell wizards I said that. God, I wish we'd drawn an Arbiter. It would have been so good. We slam a Blade Splicer and an upkeep. We're gonna make a Thali. This forces them to start casting spells now if they're scared of something like a Thali. Everyone's part of me perhaps should have left a Ghost Quarter up so that we could fake out an Arbiter there. But I mean, it doesn't really do anything. Two mana opt, make a 1 1. I'd play that. And they miss a land drop. Sweet. So we can flick us out the servo here and kill the Sahili. Or we can swing and the server will keep the Sahili alive, which then makes another 1-1 one, one next turn. It just creates value over time. So as much as I want to use the Wisp on my own Blade Spicer, I think that's the correct way to do this. But first, let's crack this Horizon Canopy. Ah, oh, we drew a second Wisp. We cast this Wisp because they can't counter it unless they have Force of Negation, which can't counter creatures anyway, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But also it means that we can violin the Wisp in response to something if we need to save a creature, etc. Kill Sahili Rai and do one to John Rap with our Blade Splicer. They hit a land drop. They have four mana open. It's going to be a Narset Parter of the Veils. Okay. What do they find? An Opt. Now, if we were to flicker in our Wisp and flicker out our Blade Splicer and back in again this turn before we untap, we'd untap with additional six power. So we would have... 15 attacking damage. Now, that would be a two turn clock, but at the moment it's two turn clock anyway. And our Wisp is good if they have a Wrath. We don't want to play into a. We kill Narset and we attack John Rap for six to the face. They play a tap land, which means you don't have to worry about Supreme Bullet or settle the wreckage here. They could opt into a Terminus though, but we could actually Wisp out the Celestial Colonnade on their end step to avoid that happening, but that wouldn't present lethal. 
I'm going to go for it. If we get Terminus, I'll feel very, very sad, but I think it's just quite unlikely. This presents lethal and kills them quicker, giving them one less turn to actually math us. There's the opt. <laughs> they Terminus us now. Come on, don't you dare. Nope, they didn't. Okay, good. They have a path for my Blade Spicer? No, they don't. Let's go to second game. We have a Wisp, five lands, and an Aether Vial. Um, one of these lands does draw a card, so there's a consideration this hand isn't complete garbage. And we are into the blue-white control deck, potentially, so our Vial is very good. I'm going to keep it, mainly because in the long game, this isn't bad to have. This makes Elder Rise Displacer very, very good. This makes Arbiter good. This draws a card, and this makes Control Magic shite for them. Uh, like, well, let's say Control Magic. It's counter spells. Vile resolves and we pass back. Okay, well, our vial doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, that only turns off our vials, though, so it's kind of like a one for one. Two drop, three drop, maybe even a four drop on the horizon? Are we curving out like real white weenie? Only time will tell. Place your bets now. Narset resolves and they find a cryptic command. Huh. Attacking Narset here means they can't draw another card. And then I'm gonna play a Wisp. We reset our Ghost Quad to allow us to potentially take them off with Triple Blue. Or maybe just fix their mana, who knows. We fill the Ruse in our Horizon Canopy. Let's screw with their Colonnade while we're at it. This gives them two untapped lands, but you know, I don't give a fuck. There's the Cryptic Triple Blue. We draw another Canopy, we attack Narset with our Selfless Spirit, and we attack them with our Flicker Wisp. They opt in response to our Declaration of Attacks. And we pass the turn. Looks like Cryptic tapped on our team and draw a card might be on the cards. Get it on the cards? Did you get, did you get, did you get, did you... Yeah. We draw a Flicker Wisp, which is pretty good. We're not going to play it before combat though, because that just gets us... That fucks us. We get the swing for five. They don't use Cryptic, which is interesting. And they don't... Okay. They untap. No Cryptic there. Field of Ruin. Okay, okay, okay. We draw planes, which is fucking great. Let's go to combat. Can we can we hit you for five again? Sweet. They go to six. I just don't want to cast my Wisp into an open Cryptic command, so I just don't bother. It just doesn't seem... We crack our Horizon Canopy to draw a card. We find another planes, because... Because, yeah, planes. They're going to blow up our Eldrazi Temple, which I don't think we care about, but fine. I would have thought the Ghost Quarter damaging the Celestial Colonnade might have been more of a, a target. Opt from our opponent. I do love how Teferi loves to cup giant balls. And smaller balls. He's, he's nondescript about the ball, the ball, the balls. We drew a Thalia, which is nice. We attempt to go to combat, but they pause. Incoming Cryptic? No. Well, let's just slam in then, take them to one. Vendillion Cleek enters the battlefield. Sure. Where's it gonna look though? Our hand. Ugh. Let's path the Cleek. Whoop. And I assume they'll take away our Wisp. They decide to take nothing. They go to one. And we then resolve a Wisp. I hope. Mana leak. They pass back having done nothing. We go to combat and we attack. Or attempt to, should I say. I'm assuming this is where the crypt- They do have two colonnades, so activating one of those next turn will be a thing. I'm gonna play the Thalia they know about, which opens us up to uh, Settle the Wreckage and or Supreme Verdict- Oh, Terminus, sorry, but Settle the Selfless Spirit here protects us against Supreme- They're gonna path my Selfless Spirit. Okay, well... That means we're probably gonna get Verdicted, which makes the Selfless Spirit on my hand feel kinda lame. Nothing from them. Okay, so perhaps they're setting up a decent block with a colonnade. I'm gonna run out of the Selfless Spirit here because obviously I wanted that gone for some bizarre reason. If you have another Cryptic here or Snappy Cryptic, then I've just fucked up. I'm thinking long and hard here. There's been a, there's been a long pause where I've sat like scratching my ass while they uh, decide what to do. Uh, I assume they've got some form of Cryptic, perhaps. Yes, there we go. On the upside, them having to counter tap means they don't draw another card and find another Cryptic or Snappy for the Cryptic or similar. Okay, interesting. That's the new Teferi. The bounce Thalia back to my hand, which makes me think this is cryptic. Draw a card. A counter. Oh, 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 oh. Timely reinforcement. That's not good. That's not good. They're now on seven. I have to attack and kill Teferi here, because otherwise, if we can't kill him for the next couple turns, they'll tick up, up, and then bounce again. We replay Thalia and the Eldrazi Temple they know about thanks to the Medellin Cleek. 
and all playing its blue eye control is so much fun. It actually is quite intricate and fun magic. It's just it's very uh, frustrating to narrate. So Big Teferi comes down and is going to tuck our wisp. Now Thalia can't really swing into these soldiers because she will die. I just draw anything that just isn't land. It's a fucking land. Now Teferi's going to draw them a card every turn. I think we've lost this match. We have more lands in play than our control opponent, by the way. Yes, and we've drawn less cards than them. Seven less cards than them. We untap and draw. Displacer, perhaps? Oh, an Arbiter. Okay, not, not the worst. It's a creature. They spell snare it. One of the cards in the hand was a fucking spell snare. Next turn we draw a... Flickle. They can now Field of Ruin me to ensure that I don't draw the Flicker Wisp. Okay. Do I have to search? Can I say no? No Wisp for me! Wisp would have been good here because we could have whisked out one of the soldiers and then attacked with our Thalia and actually got through. That would have been pretty fun, pretty nice. I'm going to Field of Ruin them in their end step to get rid of one of the Celestial Colonnades in order to reduce the chances of us drawing another fucking planes. We draw. What do we draw? Fucking planes. Holy fucking shit. For the record, we've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven non-land spells or cards. We've drawn 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 of our lands. Two of which were brought from Field of Ruins, to be fair. We only have five more lands left in our deck. We can't possibly draw them. It's not. It's just not possible. <laughs> Fucking Baneslayer Angel. Okay, we need to draw a path and we need to draw it right now. Or Displacer, I guess. That's a Blade Splicer and I feel that's just too late. But we're going to play it anyway and see how it goes. So we play Blade Splicer. They cast a Healy Vile, which can turn out a random fucking servo into a Baneslayer Angel. Do we draw a removal spell for the Baneslayer Angel? No. No, we do not. Only four more lands left in my 33 card deck. We'll give it one more draw step as Baneslayer crashes into us, taking us to 14 and then to 11. We drew Giver of Ruins. That's not a way to deal with Baneslayer Angel. What a bad place to concede for the card. <laughs> We are on the play. We've got Gira Runes into Thalia. Into... Yeah. Fucking why not? We leave Gira of Runes after our opponent molds the six. We untap. We draw Lin and Arbiter. Which seems pretty good here. They could have Spell Snare, but then that means our oh, Thalia resolves to turn after us. We're going we're gonna to play Lin and Arbiter. It resolves without them cracking the fetch. Could not be better. Even if they have Path to Exile now, Gira of Runes will save the Arbiter. Looks like the Cat Jesus strikes again. We untap and we draw Field of Ruin. We're not going to play it. We're going to play Ghost Quarter instead. We're going to play Thalia. We're going to strip mine our opponents for the first time in this league, I think. And they concede. GG strip mine E. Round four. Toot toot, motherfucker. We won the die roll. We've got two lands, an Aether Vial, a Stepmother of Runes, a two drop and a three drop. And Modo has crashed? No, we're good. We're good. We're going to keep this. The best thing about Giver of Runes is that it's giving us a one drop we can make off our Aether Vial. Now, the mono white decks always had Inspector Gadget, but it never felt too hot. And by too hot, I mean Inspector Gadget was fine. It was just a, a little bit unexciting. Our opponent has mulled to six. And this is interesting. There's a pause here. In Legacy, I would assume it's a pause to think about whether they want to force of will this. But could this be our first, first force of negation? Would I be upset about that? I guess I would be because our hand looks so gas with this ticking up. But getting two for one off of a one mana spell is often very good in Legacy, like a one mana him to Turok. Basic mountain from them, we untap, we trigger our Aether Vial. Up it goes, where will it stop? Nobody knows! Actually no, we do know. It's going to stop at three, because that's the sweet spot for our deck. The beautiful thing is here, we can slam Selfless Spirit. We make our Giver of Runes. Giver of Runes actually can be given to instruct our Selfless Spirits. They protect each other, like friends. Like, like family. Okay, Mountain into Manamorphos. Here we go. Is this Mono Red Phoenix? That's my, my guess from this opener. Manamorphos number two. Electric Boogaloo. Or in this case, I guess Fiery Mountain Boogaloo. Sex Pants. Vindaloo. No, that's a that's a better combo deck than this. Oh boy, this might be like a like two two fucking birds. I can't really fucking hope it's not. On the upside, Giver Wounds means that our oh, our 2-1 can block a Phoenix like every day of the week for the rest of time. So I might be letting through whatever Phoenix is into the bin now, which is only one, so that I can block it every time we give a runes after this. We take three, go to end step, and we activate the Pokeball. And out of it comes a stepmother who stumbled upon you learning to masturbate and decided to help teach you to do so. Sorry, I've been 
I've been doing a lot of research about step parents, and, and apparently that's what they do, according to um, this really informative website called what's it called? Pornhub. So we've got a reader. We've got a reader. About 15 seconds have passed. Pokeball this in. Oh, a gut shot, but it's an X2. They have two gut shots. <laughs> oh, that is fucking great. I'm, I shouldn't. I should. Everyone makes mistakes. Like before, we ridicule our opponent for that shit. Everyone makes mistakes. Myself included. I fuck up all the time. But it's like in their head, like, oh, it's Mother of Rune. Modern. So they just gut shot, and that didn't do anything because. It's not Mother of Runes. It's Giver of Runes. It survives gut shot. There you go, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, everyone betwixt. Giver of Runes is strictly better than Mother of Runes when your opponent has one gut shot in hand. Don't you dare fucking at me about that. Okay, we're just gonna make loads of golems now. Uh, Giver of Runes means that Selfless Spirit will block the Zarkite Phoenix and kill it next turn, hopefully. Forks Bar. Okay, they've successfully cast a burn spell that can kill. Now, I can give how much value do we place on give a runes hit if we draw another flyer then obviously it's gonna block arc like phoenixes all day long however self spirit can block the phoenix this turn and the following turns i think i'm gonna give this protection from red here this also means that the removal spell is going to struggle to kill anything else that we haven't played because this giver of runes is causing our opponent quite the conundrum that resolved too so they don't have an instant speed removal spell for the self spirit now they've conceded that game that did not go well for them giver of runes mvp the stepmother you've all asked to help you learn to masturbate. We've got a hand of flyer, flyer, rest in peace. So as long as they don't make a lot of phoenixes on turn one or two, then we're, we're, we're pretty good. This is, a, this is a solid hand. They've multi six. They're keeping. I can't wait for the London Mulligan rule personally. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Are you excited for the London Mulligan rule coming back? Do we need to ban like Allosaurus or Grizzle Wan for modern perhaps? I'm game for that if it means that we play more games of magic. They're actually pretty solid. Yes, this is definitely the mono-red version. This is this is playing burn spells. I've noticed something about my build that I didn't realise until now, is that I don't have a hell of a lot of uh, life gain effects. As in, I have none. I have no Kitchen Finks, and I have no none of my normal life gain effects in the deck. Uh, I think that's wrong. That might be an oversight when I was constructing this version of the deck, and I think you should be playing some number of life gain effects in your, in your 75 somewhere. Otherwise, your burn matchup just sucks. Rest in peace here, turns off the Phoenix line, and it also makes their faithless lootings a lot worse. Obviously, they can still burn this out. I assume they play at least four copies of Spike and four copies of Bolt, and some number of skewer the critics, perhaps. Uh, but this helps. Nothing from them on turn three. We need Selfless Spirit to protect our Thalia next turn. They gut shot our Selfless Spirit. Soul Scar Mage. That's a creature that can slowly but surely kill our Restoration Angel over the course of several burn spells. I'm gonna flash block the Soul Scar Mage. I'm gonna flash block the Soul Scar Mage. With any luck. Soul Scar Mage itself is a word that doesn't, or term, or phrase, or name, should I say. It doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. Soul Scar Mage. Soul Scar Mage. I think it's the word mage. I think I have found the word mage. Mage. J -j -j hard to pronounce. I think I've got a. Uh, I'm just weird. Holy shit. Okay, that's an interesting card for this deck out of the board. That could be a lot of fucking one ones. Surprise, cockface. That's Restoration Angel's uh, hidden flavor text. It was in the design document, but they thought, they thought the words cockface might be a little bit too blase. And they thought, you know what? Let's not call our opponents cockface. That's kind of rude. Attack Sahili for three. Again, we aren't racing them per se. There's a situation where we might have to ignore Sahili. And it doesn't make flyers and just kill them with our flyers. But we're not racing. We're just we're just controlling the game. Slam a Thalia. Slam a Flicker Wisp. Resetting our Restoration Angel for blocks in case of multiple hasty threats next turn, I guess. And then Restoration Angel will flicker our Flicker Wisp on end step. Yes. Take out a mountain until their end step. I mean, they only have two lands to untap with with a Thalia in play, which might just starve them off casting more than one spell or any spell at all. Aha! They went to tap their mana, realised they couldn't. This land comes back. Is this an instant speed removal spell for three for two mana? That's now three. Let's find out. No. <laughs> it's not, I'm afraid. Okay. We send Restoration Angel at Sahili because it's unlikely to die to one singular removal spell. We send Thalia and Flickwith at their face. And they cast a braid on our Flicker Wisp. Okay, it makes a 1-1 one, one they can block our Thalia with, I guess. We have drawn a lot of land this game, but to be honest, the, the cards we have drawn have been such high impact that we can't really complain right now. 
They're trying to cast something again that they can't cast, so I'm assuming it's a second copy of Sahili Rhyme. Or should I say, Sahili Sublime Artificer. A Sahili Rhyme is a different magic card. The little server that could gets in. These servers are adorable, do you not think? So They're so fucking cute. We get in for five. Nope, they have a kill spell for the Thalia. They do a second copy of a braid. Fine, we're only getting for three. Second main phase, we're going to cast a Wisp. Flicker out our Restoration Angel. End step, Restor comes back. Targets our Flicker Wisp. We say yes, we flicker our Flicker Wisp, but then we take out the Servo. The value, the value, that 3-1, untapped a 3-4 and killed a 1-1. One, one. Best 3-drop ever. And they scoop it up. They haven't hit uh, a relevant spell, I guess. Magic gods shine down upon me this day. We've won the fucking die roll again. I'm not used to being this lucky. We have a hand of Aether of Isle, Path to Exile, Displacer, a Cutlass Land, a Blade Splicer, a Restoration Angel. I mean, if we have one more land at the top in the next two draws, this hand is fucking gas. Somewhere to keep it. It also reminds me that I fucking love these magic cards. Jesus, they're good. So we're looking for two drops and lands off the top of our library, not more three drops. Basic Mountain, Suspense, Simian Spirit Guide, Desperate Ritual, oh shit, Rebel Master turn one. Okay, this appears to be Mono Red Prison perhaps, but the modern version? So we get Rabbled, I'm going to be pathing that Rabble Master next turn without a fucking shadow of the doubt. Unless we draw a Thalia, I guess I'll play a Thalia over there. Arbiter. Well, I'm going to play Arbiter so it makes our path better and it makes our Ghost Quarter better. They won't swing with the Rabble Master and get to kill a 1 1, so the board state will remain much the same. Unless they have a removal point Arbiter, then I'll feel fucking silly. Nope. Also, looks like they might not have a second land, so actually, yeah, path from them with the Arbiter. I can take four from the Rabble here, plus one from the Goblin to keep them off lands if they haven't got a second one. They haven't got a second one. This is. This is good for us. This is very good for us. We draw a path. We're going to path this Rabble Master now. We're then going to Ghost Quarter their only mountain. We're then going to happily pass the turn to our opponent who has one hasty gobbo in play. They got a mountain. Everyone loves a fucking mountain. We drew a blade so we're going to get in for two here. How about the cats? Exiling a Sim and Spirit Guide. Desperate Ritual. <laughs> this this feels very familiar. I would like to uh, path that though. I'm sorry. That's This time it's a whole different ball game. Cat Jesus is here, so no. End of turn. Let's make a blade spicer. Okay, looks like they can't beat the, the, the splicer token. Interesting. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. So, yeah. I th okay, this is Blood Moon Proof, and it seems pretty good against Chalice as well. I'm going to keep this. I mean, I could be completely wrong. The deck that's going Simian Spirit Guide, Desperate Ritual, Rabble Master might not be some form of Goblin Prison. I could be wrong. Okay, they're like, no, this is some spicy shit. Nothing from them on turn two. I guess we're going to see a Rabble Master on turn three. We play Arbiter. Do they have an Abrade or a Bolt for the Arbiter? Again, much like a Legacy, a Braid is on the up, I believe, because of Microsoft Lattice Lock decks like Desperate Ritual. Here comes the Legion War Boss, the slightly shitter version of Rabble Master. He's still pretty good, though. He's got a cooler outfit, but he's just not as cool. He's trying too fucking hard. He's like the booster gold of magic. Right, Blade Splicer number one. You can, you got a three drop that makes tokens. I've got a three drop that makes tokens. This is basically the white Rabble Master, let's be honest. Now, interestingly, if they play Rabble Master, it forces Warboss to attack, which means Warboss gets fucking gobbled. So Rabble Master and Legion Warboss can be quite cumbersome together in, in prison decks and legacy, and like what this is, uh, when facing off against like first striking blockers like, like this and Thalia. Oh, well, they have the Abrade for the Golem, so they're gonna get in. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get in. We take five, because I'm not blocking here. I draw another planes, which is fine. We play another blade splicer. I'm really hoping they can't kill this golem, because that would be a shit. But I would happily double block the Legion War Boss with my blade splicers to kill it. And we're gonna double spell next. Three mana, what's it gonna be? Rabble, rabble, rabble! Okay, here we go. Come on then, wait, Legion War Boss, if you think you're hard enough. There's a lot of fucking gobbos they're making, though, let's be honest. Block here. Take a fucking lot. I guess I can block one of these, take five, go to nine, and then play my uh, Displacer and my Arbiter for next turn. Their deck is fucking wild. <laughs> Absolutely fucking wild. The Wisp draw here was pretty nuts. So we get to play an Arbiter. We get to flick a wisp, our blade splicer, and then next time we can play displacer with a displacer activation up. And that should hopefully secure us the game. Unless they do something that makes their. If they play the Legion War Loyalist thing that makes their tokens. Un their goblins or creatures unblockable by tokens. 
That would be fucking awful for us. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Ensnaring bridge. Okay, it is a prison deck. Interesting. In come the gobos. I'll take one and just murder these three poor innocent con conscripts. Again, the Battle Master makes tokens that look like they're casual, you know? They'd hang out with you and, you know, chat shit. But this guy, with his fucking ornate helmet, he's trying too hard. He's trying too hard. So we can displace it off Flicker Whisk to get rid of the bridge to deal with that. And we have to keep displace activations up to him, avoid our guys dying, I guess. Our Arbiter's gonna go into the red zone, I'll happily trade it for this Goblin Battle Master here. I assume they won't. They go to 14. So far, all the damage they've taken is from this fucking Ramanap ruins. The absolute mad lad. Anger of the gods. Shit. Okay. Let's exile our Flicker Wisp here. Now, they've got a bridge in play, and they've got two cards in hand. So, if I flicker my Blade Splice around and get four power at end of turn, that four power can't even necessarily attack. If I get my Arbiter and a Ghost Quarter, then I might strand some cards in hand. So I think I have to do that. <laughs> the fucking gods in the Rabble Master deck. This is some spicy shit. In comes the Cat Jesus. Not the hero we wanted, but the hero we definitely deserve. That's a Thalia. That's pretty strong here, actually. If we play Thalia, Ghost Quarter them off of the second red. They now have two cards in hand, and their cards cost one extra mana, and they can't search their library. I'm assuming they're not playing fetch lands, let's be honest. This seems like a very mountain-heavy deck. They're on 11. Can they empty their hand? There's a land, but nothing else. Maybe their hand's full of ensnaring bridges. Go to combat. Attack for four. On the upside, if they draw a braid, they're going to try and kill the Thalia, right? And let me just play another Thalia. Seems strong. The hand might also have four mana walkers in it. The, the legacy version of the prison deck plays four mana walkers. Nope, nothing from them. The Cat Jesus is doing his job. Leon Arbiter is a fucking boss. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to hold the Sundering Growth in case they play something gross. But I'm probably going to get the Ensnaring Bridge if they manage to... Krinko Tin Street Kingpin. Interesting. Well, they have to block here or they just die. They block the Thalia, go to one... Play our Giver of Runes. And pass to them. What do they have? That could possibly fuck us here. I guess a land into Anger of the Gods would be... Oh dear. Land into Anger of the Gods would be pretty fucking good. Me playing Mother Runes was not the correct thing to do. No! We got him. We got him. G. G. Cat Jesus. E? Oh yeah, that's a 5-1. Oh, by the way. So we, um... Yeah, we were rewarded. That was pretty strong. I'm not used to doing this well. My best is normally like a 4-1. So talking about my 5-0 is weird. Because I just want to say that I feel like I played quite tight. And I did. Um, for the most part. Like for me anyway. I can be quite a sloppy player at times. But sometimes I can be quite tight with the cards that I understand and know. And when I know matchups. We got lucky as well. We didn't play against uh, too much humans or, or, or spirits. And had good draws when we did play against things like humans. Um, the deck feels generally quite powerful. Giver of Runes only appeared a little bit, but it's been pretty strong. I had a couple of practice matches before I started where I got to swing through flyers in the air by just giving Restoration Angel protection from white or green, or blue or whatever it was. So, I think Giver of Runes is generally quite a good card, and we should definitely consider playing her in any form of Death and Taxes in Modern. Whether or not she has a place in Legacy, probably not, because Mother Runes is just better. If you enjoyed the video and you like the deck, please click the like button down below and share the video with your friends as well. This deck is genuinely quite good. Let's be honest, it gets a lot of bad rap and people think they're bad white creatures in combination with uh, <laughs> Lena Arbiter and Thalion and Aether Vial is not good enough. But Flicker Wisp and Adrazi Displacer are fucking houses. I think if I was going to improve the deck, I might even cut a Tectonic Edge for one more Eldrazi Temple. It makes your matchup against blue-white control slightly worse, but your matchup against everything else significantly better. Eldrazi Displacer is a fucking god. Do you want me to comment with your favourite bit? Any questions about the deck or what you would do differently if you if you think I did something incorrect in the video? I've been Vince, also known as Peasant Kobe in, on the internet. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description for my merch and for my Patreon and for other Death and Taxes, modern, legacy and just magic goodness. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ta for now.